Hey Vlad. Hey. Dude. What's happening, brother? So we are having a Rickster coming, Ricky Powell. Yeah, I'm very I'm excited. I'm so excited. I was waiting. I've never for, met him. But, you know, you've talked about him you so love much. Love this guy. You can't. So this is the rule with Rick. You you have to let him do his thing. Otherwise, it's not gonna happen anyway. So you have <laughs> to let him do it. He's a free spirit. Uh, I know what he likes. He likes our pancake burger. I so like I your pancake burger. For, yeah. So I'll do waffles, pancake burger, maybe frittata or omelet. We'll see. And he loves it. That's so okay. great. So what are some of the things you want to talk about with him? I just want to know like wh how he became who he is because I never saw anybody like him. Has like, he t he's talked to you a lot about who he is. He talks about uh, uh, being individualist, be, uh, how he just does what he does if somebody doesn't like him. But he not just talk about it, he is what he talks about. Like That's really he's great. completely authentic and genuine. Like I never seen anybody like him. That's great. I'm excited about it. Let's go. Uh, let's go meet him. All right. Let's do All it. Right. Sounds great. Hello, everyone. I'm Eddie Brill. I'm the host of OG Talk. OG Talk for Organic Grill with my co-host Vlad Grinberg. He's here today um, with a passionate and compassionate people come to eat and laugh and talk, and that's what we're here today with our very good friend Ricky Powell. Ricky, thanks for coming today. Oh, good morning. Oh, How yeah. Are you? <laughs> By the way, yeah, we're doing a thing. I'm trying to get some sports scores. Yeah. Because we got, you know, this is the time of the year when we're recording it that all four sports are going on at the same time. Basketball, yeah, well, hockey. Roller derby. Roller derby and, uh, ch and uh, Chinese checkers. Yes. It's all four going on at once. Are you a big Chinese checker fan? Uh, not, well, not, not big. I used to be huge into the Chinese checkers. I like to watch handball down in Chinatown. <laughs> right. Well, that's sort of Chinese checkers. They're checking each other out. The but I think we should introduce uh, uh, Ricky. And oh, who's this guy? You did. Well, I did oh, sort of. Well, you know, All right. uh, great. You know, what, this channel, is, what channel are you listening to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Photographer, videographer, substitute teacher, um, book DJ. writer, DJ, uh, friend. Wow. Uh, vegan, uh, you former know. dog walker. Yeah, former. You stopped. Yeah, you know. Once, yeah. He just takes pictures now. I like taking pictures of dogs. Yeah. yeah. So when you were a kid, you grew up with uh, Ad Rock's sister from the Beastie That's Boys. That's the lead-off question. That, no, it wasn't. Uh, but I decided to make that. <laughs> okay. One. As yes, my, Rachel was in my fourth grade class. Right. Mr. Ware. <laughs> and That's the answer you decided to give. No. The, uh, yeah, so she's in fourth grade class. At the Greenwich Village School. Right, because you were, you were from cute. the west side. She was cute. Well, in fourth grade, I was living in Union Square on 14th and 4th. Right. Over the, the apartment building that's over that pointy corner where Walgreens yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. The building on top. I have vivid memories from those days. Yeah, and, and nowadays there's no memories. All the memories are gone. Well, the memories are still there. All the places are gone. My building is that's the only thing one. left in that neighborhood. Yeah, we were I talking just, earlier about the East Village. You come down here, and it's completely changed down oh, here. Whenever I t whenever I walk on St. Mark's between Second and Third, I'm just like, yeah, damn, that's, what happened? It's like no flavor left. Like every cause every storefront had fla every store had flavor on that block. It was just like a minestrone soup of mad flavorful ingredients it was just like oh, it's so sad but the whole village is like that you know oh. over on the west side 8th street which is like my, my st mark's there's only two places left from the 70s it's uh the gem spa no i said <laughs> west side 8th oh, street oh okay um i should pay attention lady uh was jimmy hendrix studio uh ladyland no but, but that's electric ladyland okay. that and eva's Right. So anyway, yeah, Eva's still rocking. The village is just like, ugh, dude. I don't want to get depressed. Okay. Well, so I'm still breathing. So, and it's a beautiful day. That's right. And luckily, we got this kind of restaurant. This yeah. dude. Yeah. Now that's very cool. That's why everyone comes here. That's you why. You are I keeping came here. it. You know. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. No, seriously. I cannot. How did you first find the the organic grill? Was it through the, the twenty years? The, the dirty pages in the in, <laughs> in the village voice. <laughs> Yeah, no. even the village voice is gone. Oh, that's God. Sure. Yeah. Anyway. Sure, huh? All right, so, so here, we'll go back. We, I was going to bring up uh, the Beastie Boys, but that was too quick for you. That's one facet of my life. I have many. But let's talk about the early days, the East Village Eye. Oh, I love the East Village Eye. Yeah, them, them, I can't exactly decipher, but it was them and Paper Magazine gave me my start in uh, shooting like the 
downtown scene. I think your, ex, your ex-girlfriend gave you a start, no? Hold on, no, no, no. <laughs> In getting published. All right. So the first photos you, you put out were in the East Village. Office. Knucklehead Productions over here. Yeah. What'd you get me into? <laughs> to the Knuckleheads. The East uh, but that's why I brought up the East Village Eye, because that was the first place. Yeah, I, I think uh, my first shot I got published was um, Keith Haring and Futura. Mm-hmm. Maybe at like The World, the club The World on 2nd yeah. and C. But, uh, yeah, you know, Leonard Abrams, big, big ups to him. And, you know, actually I shot my first cover for the East Village Eye, the Beasties, in the 80s, spring of 86. So that was my first official shoot with the Beasties in May of 86. So I kind of, like, uh, solidified kind of, like, my photography um, relationship with them. And then, you know, that summer I started... I hit. I uh, quit my Frosé job. And met them on tour, the Raising Hell tour down in Tampa. You were selling frozen uh, uh, ices. Yeah, Frosé. It's like right. Frosé was like a fr- uh, lemon slush. I liked it. You know, I was decent. My first job out of college. And uh, were you I, taking pictures in college? Were you taking? Uh, were you doing photos since you were a kid, or how did no. photography kind of start for you? Well, after I found my ex-girlfriend's camera, then, you know, I kind of started shooting out of, you know, spite, revenge, saying, I'm going to make this biatch. Sorry, she played me like a wet tuna sandwich. <laughs> so, because I was going to Hunter College for my phys ed degree. I wanted, to, I wanted to have the easiest job possible in life. Right. So I'm, a, I'm a, a simple guy. Basketball coach. Basketball I teacher. just wanted to be a substitute phys ed teacher. Were you the easiest job? Were you a substitute teacher? Yeah, I was. I became that that from '87 to '91. I actually used to work at PS63 over here on Mm -hmm. Third Street, between First and A. And uh, you know, I used to just, you know, whenever I got that, when you get elementary school, you kind of stuck with the same class all day. Mm -hmm. So I like junior high, getting junior high because it changed every period. So. You got different people. Now, when I was a kid and we had substitute teachers, we would just rail on them. We wouldn't let them breathe. Right. Well, not me. Okay. Tell, yeah. I was the cool substitute teacher. Okay. How? How were you so Well, cool? I'd walk in and they'd see me like, they'd be like, oh, shit, this guy, we're not, this, what, who, what is this? So, you know, I'd be like, you know, hey, what's up? Yo, you guys want to be cool? We'll be cool. You want to be like, you know, douchebags? I'll treat you like douchebags. <laughs> they probably, <laughs> they probably liked it. Like, we want to yeah. be douchebags. Well... Depending on also what I had going on in my life, there's one famous story. I had errands to run that day. So this was 87, so I was going, I would go back to substitute teaching when I come back from touring with the Beasties and run DMC, you know, different legs in, uh, of the tour. And one day I needed to get a check from run DMC's accountant, the uh, famous, uh, oh man, what was that entertainment accountant on uh, Columbus Circle? Elliot something? Or no? Anyway. So I said, listen, I'm going to teach you guys the art of the hustle. Get your coats on. I snuck them out the side of the building. And they ran some errands with me, and they loved it. And, you know. It was like the got, movie The Dream Team, where they took the, the people out of the, the home and then brought them out on the street, and they, they had a real-life experience. And it's interesting, because I remember being having a band class, and uh, I was in Brooklyn at uh-huh. Bensonhurst. And we had a substitute teacher for band class, and the guy was a douche, uh, and uh, and we treated him like shit. And so, mm-hmm. and we and he we said to the the teacher said, uh, and he just he opened his briefcase and took out a newspaper, and started reading. We're like, what the fuck, you know? We're we're here to do band. He goes, write poetry. So I remember I wrote a poem. I wrote, I can't write a poem. I always miss. So if I can't write a poem, what is this? And that started my career. In being and douchebaggery. Um, speaking, well, speaking, this is my first book. Oh snap! I wrote. I put the first thing you open the book is like a dean. I got sent to the dean mm. for throwing my baritone across the room. <laughs> and uh, my first year at Seward Park High School in the Lower East Side mm-hmm. was the band teacher was making us play corny march songs. I was just like, Yo, fuck this shit, dude! I can't play this corny shit. And I threw my shit. Right. And I still have, you know, so if you see my book, Oh Snap, you'll see. I can't, I can't stand corny music or corn balls. Right, that was Going the Going back to when I was a kid, I can't stand corn balls. Right, I remember reading about that. And I, can't, that. I can't fake the funk. I'm a bad actor. 
Yeah, well, that's good. You shouldn't fake anything. Not that I'm like, you know, Paul Newman. Yeah, yeah. I did have your salad dressing, though, and it was really, really delicious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have to give Joanne Woodward. <laughs> give her know, all the credit. She's a good, good lady. Um, well, speaking of food and stuff, let's yeah. bring out some of the food we have here. Yeah, all right. We this have dude, some great this food. The this is the guy. The galloping gourmet of, yeah. of hip hop, right? Yeah, here. you should watch him gallop. He's amazing. He's uh, no. The, I love the the the, the 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 sauces you have. They're like right. very. Uh, they're like uh, what you gonna call it? They're like uh, all right. delicious. Let's have it. What's the second? Pheromones. Oh, aphrodisiac. Yeah, right. That's. They're like aphrodisiacs. They give you a big afro. Right. Yeah, so let's and see. we're gonna have uh, waffles and we, we need waffles. Extra plates. Waffles so. every day. Oh. Uh, we have uh, pancake, sick omelet, and uh, burger. This is we my call favorite. Sick pancake. pancake burger. Wow. Great. And we sick. have uh, mac and seen, cheese buns. I've never seen a concoction like that. Yeah, which one? The, the, the burger. One, yeah, we'll try the what's that? Coleslaw. What's, yeah, and what's the burger made out of, Vlad? Um, uh, vegetables, uh, uh, rice, and um, other grains. It's gluten free. Let's try. Yeah. Let's cocoa puffs. Let's try this. Yeah, I'm cuckoo for the for the food here. So Rick, I, I could imagine you Ooh. had a, a hard time fitting in certain uh, structure and environments. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, give well that away. Well said. Yeah. Well said. So we're not all knuckleheads. Uh, no. I mean, I don't like to be a pain in the in the butt, but you know. Listen, I'm a simple man, so I don't care what you've heard on the boulevard about me. I'm a simple no, I, man. No, we've heard good things. And you know, I one am. of the. I'm what, a good person. You are a good person. There's and some I, people we, you bring up my name, they're like, oh man. That uh, guy is that yeah, guy's name, right? I can yeah, tell everybody I talk to, people really, really I'm love good. it. No, seriously. Uh, so seriously, let me I'm, set the record straight. I'm a good spirit, good hearted man, good spirited, embrace people. But, you know, when someone whack comes up to me and exudes their whackness on me, I can't fake it. Like, ah, I'm just like... Yeah, that doesn't look good. Dude, get that the fake. fuck away from me, all right? And this this is, is kind of... Uh, so, and then, and then, and then, they blah, 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 blah. But, believe me, you ask most people... I'm about being a positive force, so I just want to put that out there. Right, and, and, and we were talking earlier about your individualist. Oh, that's the yes, part. That's I, what we'd when like to I first talk about uh, met you, that's the first thing I, I kind of well, heard. Well, actually, it's funny you say that because here's the title of my latest book, right. The Individualist. Oh wow! Because that I think, man. that I think, is, you know, describes what I am. So describe us who you are. This is my first dog, Chico. All right. Mexico and City. And yes, man. yes. Oh, my man, George Lois. You know about him? No, tell me. Dude, this guy's a master of creativity. He, used, he did all the Esquire covers. Ah, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's powerful. So tell folks about the individualist because it's an important well, part of who you are. You know, oh shit, I forgot to look up the meaning on the way over here. I'm a nonconformist, dude. I just, you know, I just do do as I, you know, think is right. I don't follow, you know, I don't kiss ass. I do I try to do the right thing. Um, I should look the shit up. I used to know what it looked like. I got the idea of individualism from an uh, album cover of uh, Gil Evans. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's it. I mean, and, and but I think you created your my own. My yeah. yeah, I have to create my own shit, dude. I can't be like, you know, whatever, dude. I have a you know, hard time following rules. But, or, but, who, but who wants to, you know? Who, I know. But, who, but everybody says it. Uh, this is my impression of you, if you just want to know. Please. Like when I first met you and then when I read that you say, oh, you have to reinvent yourself. You are like I'm emphasis of it. Yeah. Like this okay. guy, he creates his own universe. Uh, universe. Yeah. That's right. He creates his own That's language. Right. When I get your text messages, oh, it's like, what is that? And first time he's, he saw me, he's yeah. like, you take pictures, don't use my hashtags. Nah. All right? Oh, this is I, I, I said it like that? <laughs> no, no, no. It was I, really, I'm, uh, a, I'm a little protective of my intellectual <laughs> property. No, seriously, when people... I use my hashtags as my own files. So, you know, I like it when people dig my hashtags. You know, people say, oh, my God, your hash... But I don't like, you know, and actually, if someone uses my hashtag for their shit, 
if it's a good picture and a good post, you know, I let it ride. But if it's whack, I hit them up with, hey, yo, Duke, yeah. you mind thinking of your own hashtag? That's mine. Da, 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 da. Most of the time, they comply, like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. But, but you know, if they get stupid, then, you know, yeah. I get a little vicious. I'm like, look, bitch, <laughs> step off. You're, you're weak. You're but, soft. But so you know what's interesting, Vlad? You come from a place where individualism is not oh, the king. Oh, right? shit. I, came, right. I came from a place where oh, you think like one. And yeah, you yeah. act like one. Yeah. If you are not the one, then you don't Oof. exist. Yeah, yeah. And Fuck it's up. crazy. Uh, like I remember, I told you guys all That's the time when I was in the army and it was mandatory. Oh, shit. You in the army? Yeah, yeah, I mean it was mandatory. But I was a kid. Oh, shit. Uh, but the funny part uh, was you like stay in line and you get those yeah, voting yeah, yeah. vouchers and they're mm. pre pre signed already. You, yeah, so yeah, all yeah, you yeah. do, you just put it in in urn and you don't have to do anything else. They don't even want you to think. <laughs> they just want you to. And you are completely opposite. You just no, uh, you do your own language. You do your own um, thing. Oh, no, but yeah, no. I'm sure how I, how yeah. does it work? Like uh, one of the philosophy uh, principles that I. Uh, I heard from you is having no ego. So how oh. being individualist and uh, having yeah, no ego? Wow, you actually you you listened to me when I spoke. Wow, <laughs> that's all I do. Yeah. All right. Well, the no ego part. That is part of a little mantra that I say to myself, mm -hmm. a four-step mantra. I say to myself when I'm going to go to like an event, like it. Uh, you heard of Milk Studio? Yeah. The photography place. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of highfalutin, you know, openings there. I had a few myself that were rather yeah, were historic. Okay. Um, so if I'm going to go to a place with a lot of people with egos, I mean, I know I'm going to be the Broadway Joe when I go in right. there. I'm going to be Joe Namath, the star quarterback. I know that, but... I guarantee a win. You know, I don't want to be like that. So first thing I say, I might walk over to a place. Number one, right. lose the ego. Mm -hmm. Because that can be toxic. Number two, get humble, be humble. All right. Right there, those two first steps kind of like alleviate me from being like, I could just go and just be happy, go lucky. Three is show love, spread love. And then four is be like water. Yeah. Like Bruce Lee would say. Bruce Lee. Like, don't be stiff because, you know, you can break. Just be yeah. like water. So those things, they help me get along when I'm feeling like a little, you know, I'm about to, you know, deal with some souped up jerk offs, corn yeah. balls. Right. Those corn balls. Oof, dude. Speaking of, speaking of corn balls, let's talk about <laughs> this, this radio. It's fantastic. Oh, my Jewish, anti -corn ball. Jewish boom box. <laughs> <laughs> that I nicknamed. You walked in with I it. I never saw him without this. The black yeah. beauty. My ever. black beauty. Yeah. Not my discreet newbie and dyke thug. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Is this like a uh, I saw him politically he, everyone, correct? No, there's nothing political. There's nothing anybody, political. Look at, look at me. Uh, look at me. If anybody me. gets me. rattled by what I say, yo, you're, sti you're uptight, stiff. Relax. Have a knish. <laughs> <laughs> so you're always with your radio. Well, you know, I like to listen to WFAN sports. You ever call in? And that's the only yeah. way that that's you can... That's a good question. Yo, yeah. psh, I this one guy, Tony Page, he just retired after 16 years. He, was just, he did the, the night owl hours. Mm -hmm. He loved me. Ricky from the village, what's up? Oh, right. I've, I'd be like, yo, I know, I know. what's up with da 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 He'd start cracking up. And uh, Any memorable exchanges? Uh, yeah, we talk, I told him, yeah, we, you know, because we talked about how dangerous it was in football, people tackling with their head first. Right. So I said, you know, when I was growing up, little kid, like 10, 11, 12, we played tackle football, you know, neighborhood versus neighborhood. Right. In like Union Square Park, Washington Square Park, Sheep Meadow in Central Park. And, you know, I remember I used to lead with my head and, you know, I can't believe none of us got hurt. Yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah, you are lucky. Yeah, because people <laughs> maybe are... Maybe he wasn't, maybe he wasn't. No, we but just... Yeah. <laughs> but we used to play in Union Square Park in like 71. Yeah, you had to dodge the needles when you fell. Yeah, there was a lot of junky... Well, we played on Dog Shit Field. That was... Uh, you had to that dodge... That was the name of the field. Dodge the... You know, was the it dog a guy shit. named Billy Dog Shit and it was his field? No, no, no. It was dog... Literally, <laughs> literally dog, dog shit. Literally dog shit, yeah. But, um... You know, because I lived across the street, so I had football parties for my birthday. And actually... That's pretty cool. When... Interesting tidbit, Jojo the Pimp bought me my first football. 
from that's, Essex. That's, that's, very, that's a good name. From, from where? Essex. I'm trying to squeeze it out. <laughs> I've been, after this food, you'll be squeezing it out. Oh, it's dear. very, very healthy. So you had an amazing good. career. You met like really interesting people in your life. Well, you know, those two years I lived on 14th and 4th were very... I lived there from 68 to 73, when I was second grade to sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So, you know, very, I loved that, that period of time for many reasons. Music, movies, culture. New York sports. New York sports, definitely. Good call. And, but, you know, I used to ride my bike around the block. So if I lived on 14th and 4th, mm -hmm. say this is the block here. I lived here 14th and 4th. Here's 14th and 3rd. Here's 13th and 3rd. This is where that whole corner where Taxi Driver was filmed. So I knew that intersection of 13th and 3rd even before they filmed that movie because I used to hang out mm -hmm. on that corner with my Stingray bike. Yeah. Looking at all the, like, the junkies and the prostitutes. and That whole intersection was buck nutty. So anyway. Jojo the Pimp lived in my building, and I used to be, you know, I was an only child, single parent. I'd always be running around, throwing balls against the wall. So he saw me, and he lived in the building and bought me. I always thought he looked like Tommy Agee of the Mets oh, right. with, a pen, with a pencil mustache. All right, it's neither here nor there. Yeah, so, right. Mobile, so Alabama. Me, uh, but pimps were not only people that you met in your life. You met, like, really interesting people. You worked with interesting people. So did... Did you take most of your pictures with this camera? Yes, this is the oh, okay. one I started, like most, that? most of them, in 85. I, this is the one I met, I found. Yeah, this is the one I shot, you know, the club scene right off the bat in 85. And your famous Basquiat uh, Yeah, I shot Warhol. the Basquiat Warhol. This one? How, did, how did that come about, the Basquiat uh, Warhol. Warhol photo? Um, you know, they were on my Deoc, so, you know, da-da-da. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going Actually, you know the famous poster? It looks like a boxing poster yeah, of Warhol. Yeah. That was for an opening. They show it they had in, at the Shafrazi on Mercer Street. So I met up with this other dynamic duo, Zephyr and Revolt, graffiti writers, who, you know, I thought they were the coolest. You know, they were like the Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid mm -hmm. dynamic duo to me. So I was hanging with them across the street from the opening. There was like a thousand people in the street waiting for them. So as I'm taking pictures of those two, Zephyr and Revolt, I see Zephyr, I mean, uh, Warhol and Basquiat coming from Houston Street, walking south. So I was like, oh, shit, wait up. So, you know, I skedaddled across the street, stopped in front of them. And I, as I always greeted Basquiat, I'd be like, yo, what up, Gene? And he'd be like, it's Jean. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, come on, Gene. <laughs> and I'd be like, yo, let me get one. He's like, sure. He said to Warhol, he's cool. All so right. they yeah. let me get one shot, boom. And they went on and like, one shot. And you know, sometimes that could be iffy with these, because sometimes the foreground subject will be blurry mm -hmm. and the background will be sharp. sharp right. And just with this one, the cam I got some, I got some dope shots with this camera. Right. Yeah, did you boys through the, through the uh, pool, right? That was no, crazy. that was, that wasn't my, no, that was another camera. What do you think of the technology nowadays with cameras and does that excite you at all? Uh, eh. Right. This is me on tour at the Beasties. I became part oh, of the nice. act. That's an L.A. Hollywood, I mean, Palladium. Oh, oh, the freaks, the freaks. Yeah. I want to just show you one shot. Oh, okay. here's from my old public access show, Rapping with the Rickster. Rapping with the Rickster. Yeah, tell us about the show. Okay, well, that started in summer 90. I was broke on his Lawrence Fishburne in Tompkins Square Park. Right. Oh, wow. In 87. Another Brooklyn boy like me. And, uh... So, you started so the show? yeah, summer in '90, and you know I was broke and shit. Oh wait, just one. more. Here's me and Warhol in '86. Oh, that's All right, nice. yeah. Can you he get on, you guys got that? My, I had to tell him to fall back a little bit. You know the Wiggers, they love me. Mm. Get it? Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, summer in '90, I'm broke and shit. Mm -hmm. Living in a dump on 19th, 14th and 9th, and I'm watching daytime TV, and the shit is whack. 
So I was like, I'm gonna make my own show. I'm gonna bring the people I shot pictures of to life. Was there something similar to this before about hip hop or no? No, it wasn't strictly hip hop. It was just me getting anyone. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to do a daytime talk show. Right. But there wasn't a show like that and, uh, at the time. Well, public access, you know, anyone could get a show. So, you know, I just, I just did it the way I did anything else, just the way I could do it. You know, and I, when I, first I had the crew editing and then like, I got my own camera, so then I started doing my own editing in my house, right. in the like mad scientist way, like yeah. plugging shit in this way, that way, into the VCR and filming the TV set and da da da, and putting the stereo on. And so, you know, I, I, I liked it, so, I think that I liked it, 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 yeah. tra it transcended, people dug what I was doing. So, you know, listen, I ain't trying to be like the best or the top. I just- It goes, with, you, one, it goes with your Bruce Lee I'm thing. Just, you're not, you're trying to stay humble, but do what you like. Basically, listen, I'm just one man's time capsule. Mm -hmm. Whoever likes it, great. Whoever doesn't, that's fine yeah, too. Yeah, I understand that. I just so, do it just for the heck of it. I didn't even really, you know, I was just, those days, I was just doing what I had to, what I could do, just for fun. I was just having fun. All right, so, so tell me about the Beasties and that whole scenario. Because uh, you, did, you were in Lollapalooza, like at the beginning, before it's become this big thing. You went there with them like in 94, mm -hmm. and Lollapalooza started in like 91. Yeah, well, I mean, I toured with the Beasties, brought me along on the License to Ill Tour. How did that happen? How did they bring, find you, bring you? I know you were Ad Rock's sister's friend, Rachel. Did you remember? Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They, uh, <laughs> we just knew, I knew, listen, I knew Ad Rock too. Yeah, he was the younger brother. Right, and we just, we knew each other from the same neighborhood. Back to that, the you know, I went on license till then in 92, they brought me along and check your head, they said you gotta do luggage. I was like, bet. <laughs> I liked it. Right. And I think this is me in 94. Oh, wow. Lollapalooza when I'm not wow. doing luggage. Very nice. Filming with my little doinkster. Yeah. So at that point in the early 90s, I was a substitute teacher. I was working as a delivery guy for a pot delivery service. That's we, we deliver. You never can not deliver. that one, other yeah. one. And, uh, you know, so I was doing different things. Uh, just looking for this one shot. Okay. Negroids. Anyway, this is a good book. I like this one. It's a this little is, autobiographical. This is, is this your fourth book or the sixth? Sixth. Wow. That's this fantastic. is me and Ron Galella. Anybody heard of Ron Galella? This guy, his body of work is sick. Mm. He's one of my big bros. I got a couple of old timers that are my big bros. I, I give respect to. So I was who, like, who else? Who else? Who else do you the mentors in your life? Well, those two. Also, George Kalinsky. Right. He's the official photographer for Madison Square Garden since yes. '67. He has a new book that I looked at. It oh yeah, great. Good guy. Damn bitch. Oh, it's Elliot Erwitt. Legend. Leroy Neiman. Yeah, more legend. Ron. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Fuck. Oh, Ron Delsner. Yeah, that's uh Dude was powerful in the music business. Yes. Fuck. Oh, here's a great shot I shot at LL Cool J on the Raising Hell Tour. Oh, wow. Ah, very nice. Coming out on stage in New Orleans. Well, Ran into him great. recently. Really great guy. He really is a really great guy. I LL is a great guy. Very classy. So, you so, know, so um, okay, um, the other things I want to talk about was your camp, the camp thing you do. Camp? Camp and your, your, uh, camp? Uh, for summer the camp? Yeah. Well, summer camp, sleepaway camp was a big part of my life throughout the 70s. Right. So, actually I have some friends now, we rent out a summer camp after the right. season. We go up there and bug out for about 10 days. Fantastic. Yeah. When I first saw it, like, creek in summer camp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a big part of my life. I still stay in touch with Gary Eisenberg <laughs> from Whitestone, Queens, who I went to camp with in like 75. So what do you do in camp now, like for those 10 days? Me, personally, I just walk around and get stupid. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just walk, walk around. around. I like taking the, the canoe out. 
on the water and the lake. I like to uh, listen but to music. But who is that thing in this camp? My boys, uh, Craig Weatherby, Timbo Baggins, they call themselves wearethegoodlife.com. They just produce dope, dope shit. That's my new fam. Yeah, that's pretty very great. Good that's guys. very interesting that you had so much uh, uh, experience going on, and you obviously seasoned photographer, and you still uh, working with young crew, with those kids coming up, and you always give them hands. Uh, yeah. You are Rick for the Institute, huh? I love <laughs> how you. I love how. I love how you recognize. No, no, you are. You're like. No, he made me start you. crying. No, he he I, I told me about just, you a long no, well, time listen, ago. No, listen, listen. Actually, me and, Dan, me and Danny Boy, actually, one thing in common. We have this one thing we see each other. Yeah, We're like, uh, you know, from House of Pain. Yeah. We tell each other, yo, man, you, you got to go where you're loved. That's very nice. So, you know, I mean, it's practically, you know, the, the ones that love you and you go with them. You know, you just yeah. ignore the, the haters and you go where you're loved. Yeah, so, well, you, that's been the theme of most of the things you've been saying today. Is go with the, go where you love and and, yes. and be somebody humble and be someone yes. who gives back and your mentorship. Yes. All right. So how can Ooh, people all checks on the checklist yes. right there? How many? How can pe How can we help you? Like you have some books. Money. Or, right. Money. How can we get? Money how can food. we get you money for food? <laughs> is there a website? Is there? A, uh, nah. Okay. Sort of. Not really. But we want to get to the Ricky Powell it, books. Really? Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's wow. what, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm Yo, a, just uh just meet me in Washington Square Park every Wednesday <laughs> at noon under the arch. I was there the, the other day and you weren't there. With a shopping bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take clothes. Now actually you know what? Everything I'm wearing is a gift. Everything I'm wearing is yeah. Well, this is a gift. <laughs> I got this <coughs> from Danny Everything Boy. Everything I wear is free. And I appreciate it from everybody because well, I don't want to get too into it, but I had a dark part of my life where I was spending my money on the wrong thing. So mm -hmm. that's done with. So how did you get out of it? How did you get out of spending? Uh, I just got to a point where I'm like, you know what, Duke, enough. Mm -hmm. You know, time to change shit up, which is, you know, it's refreshing. Yeah, because it's a, a lot of people in our neighborhood here, me on the east side, you on the west side, they didn't give up, and they're not around to tell oh, the story. Oh, they didn't give up the, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's a little, it's, uh, as I had a show recently called Simply Complicated. It's, uh, that's what I am. That's Simply very Complicated. Good. Uh, you know, I'm a loner, a lone wolf. And, uh, and we're glad I, you came into our den today yeah thank you we really you. we really appreciate it we're so happy that you're here and Vlad tell, tell people a little bit about you Rick, well, Rick for well, the Institute huh? anyone that wants to reach me I'm the lazy hustler on Instagram That's the true. lazy hustler the lazy but hustler the, or lazy hustler? the the, the okay the. The, the 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 right listen my Rick for the Institute is just an imaginary university of creative individualism that me and my teammate Tono we make we're gonna start making some gear we had we had a couple of clothing lines in japan with hats and shirts and sayings on the shirt so i have a new i have a new uh deal on on the table with new era mm -hmm. so if that comes through which i feel good knock on wood i'm gonna have t-shirts that have inspirational little quick sayings right well you we know, look like we do look like do you you know, do you right shit like that? You know, just right. inspiring. Let people know, you know, especially the bug outs who aren't sure where they want to do. I'm just like, do you, man? Right. Well, look, you had people who mentored you, and now you're mentoring other people. Yeah, and that's the way true. it should be. True, true, true. That's the way it true, should be. True, true. Well, we appreciate you coming down. That's it. You're kicking yeah, me yeah, out not, now. Yeah, not well, you, you could stay here. What? But we're yes. leaving. We're, Actually, we're we're I got some drug lords. I got to. <laughs> I got to hit <laughs> off. At least they're lords. The Lord of the like, Drugs. Oh, you know, Actually, so much. I gotta go. You know Santo? You know, yeah, Santo Molitor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> you, just, you just scored mad brownie points. <laughs> you know? That's my man. I gotta go pick up my new business cards. All right. Well, tell Santo I said hey. I will. Yeah, I love so him. Much and yo, Thank you very much. You're the fucking man, dude. I love He's you, man. Guy. You're He's a beautiful soul. Thank you very much. Listen.
You're, you know, representing, man. Yeah, Vlad Grinberg, Grinberg, The Organic Grill, OG Talk. Thank you and so much for coming. Um, we uh, have the very talented Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's, Thank it's you. I appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you really happy much. to have you here. You deserve a medal for putting up with me. Oh, I, I uh, full metal jacket. <laughs> All right, be well. All right, Let's eat. You. Let's eat.